Hi there and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo where I'm attempting to add every single animal in Planet Zoo into this one franchise zoo. After a monumental build for the polar bears last week, this week is a little more relaxed for the animals going into the zoo today. Next up is the Puff Adder and as is tradition I will build this off camera and we'll take a look at that in a bit. So let's move on straight to the next habitat animal which is the Pygmy Hippo. Pygmy share enrichment with the Red River Hog but since we've already added the Red River Hog these will be going in on their own. Space wise, the pygmies do need quite a bit of space considering their size. No surprise there, the full size hippos do need a lot of space as well. So where am I going to put the pygmies? There is a little space left in front of the polar bear dome, so I'm looking to fill this in in the next couple of episodes. I think the pygmies could potentially fill this space right here. My idea for the pygmy hippo enclosure, I thought it might be a nice idea to make a smaller version of the larger hippo enclosure, so copy exactly what that looks like but make it miniature for the mini hippos. This is a fun idea but it also makes my life a little easier because I don't have to come up with an original design here. Last week building for those polar bears, that was exhausting. So this week I've gone a little easy on myself and the enclosure this week, they're my usual standard. But I guess when you compare to what I created for the polar bears, it might look a little dumbed down than it did for that because that was, that was an exception, the polar bear habitat. I think getting to the end of this series, we're down to about the last 20 or so animals. My inspiration and creativity well is starting to run maybe a little low. I suppose at this stage. I don't think I'm going to beat myself up about that. I think after 140 odd habitats, I mean it's bound to happen isn't it? So I think the polar bear habitat is going to stand in this zoo as the most creative habitat that I've created. Everything else may seem a bit mediocre in comparison. Anyway that's the hippo enclosure ready to look at so let's take a look. Welcome to mini hippo world. Lovely animal this one, very cute. Let's see, how are you settling in in your new habitat? Ah, oh, having a little meander there. Just two hippos needed in this habitat, so it does help with the space a bit there compared to the larger hippos that need two females to be happy. And yeah, they are still quite demanding considering there's only two hippos here. That is a lot of water and a lot of land for such tiny animals. So design of this habitat, I base this on the larger hippo habitat and it's kind of a little mini copy of that one. I think if we go and take a look at that one just as a comparison. So this is the original hippo enclosure and I did put quite a lot of thought into this one. Considering hippos take up so much room, you've got to be quite careful and selective of where you put things so it doesn't look too empty. Indeed, you're very space hungry, aren't you? We have had some babies over here at this point as well. And looking at the babies here, they're about the same size as the pygmy hippos themselves. I wonder if that was by design. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, aren't I? So big hippo enclosure. I like the design of this, so I did a copy of it for the pygmy hippos. And yeah, I think I've replicated this quite well. About the only thing I didn't do, there's no underwater viewing area at the front. Honestly, I was in no mood to be fiddling around with underwater viewing and pathing and all that malarkey this week. But the water for the pygmy hippos is quite shallow, so you do get to watch them floating about here quite well. They're not going deep enough here to not be able to see them. Anyway, that's pygmy hippos in. Let's move on. Almost forgot we've got a puff adder to look at here. First time in this zoo, went with a different style for the exhibit boxes here. And there's an archway in the middle rather than having the sides open and putting the 3D walls in. So first into this building is the puff adder here. Bit smaller, I guess, than I thought a puff adder would be. You can tell I don't know a lot about reptiles. Anyway, space for two more exhibit animals when they come up. I am just squeezing the exhibit in anywhere they'll fit at this point. I'm starting to envision a definite boundary to where this zoo will stretch out to and I'm hoping to get everything into this corner of the space just so it's all nice and together by the end. Anyway, I'll stop meandering and we'll move on to the next animal. 
Not a yellow anaconda. <laughs> That'll be the last animal. We are into the R's. It's the red fox. A small animal, this one. Very cute. Red fox habitat. I've been planning for this ever since I added the badgers into the zoo. We created kind of a European area up at the top end of the zoo when we added the Eurasian lynx and the badgers and the grey seals. And at the time I was doing those, I figured the red foxes would be more at home up this side of the zoo. So for a bit of cohesiveness, I left a little gap up here and figured that the red foxes would fit in here quite well. For the design of this habitat, it's very much in line with what I created for the badgers when we did that maybe, oh, I think that was a couple of months ago now. Anyway, I really liked the classic British countryside sort of ambience that I got with the badgers and thought the foxes are going to fit in so well with that as well. My only issue with the foxes, like the badgers, they are a shy animal and you have to protect them from the view of the guests doesn't really fit in with what I've got going on with the fox habitat. I've had to put these ugly fences up at the front and put the one-way glass in there so they're not going to get upset with people looking at them. I think if the foxes had come up earlier in this series, I might have spent a bit more time working on the barrier at the front and made this maybe into a building or something. A classic red brick building with windows might have worked. As it is, the end is in sight for this series and I'm sure I said before, my motivation is I'm struggling with the creativity a little bit so sometimes I just want to get these done and dusted in an afternoon. So we're not producing any architectural wonders this week. However, for the Red Fox, something I delved into that I've not spent a lot of time on before was looking at some of the conservation DLC pieces. I had a lot going on in my life when the conservation DLC released and I really didn't spend very long looking at all the lovely gardening pieces that were released with that pack. Now, foxes, shy as they are, they are a fond visitor of people's back gardens. So I've made this habitat into a little bit of a back garden there with some of the conservation stuff at the back. So nestled into the back of the grey seal and the badger habitat, I've squeezed in the red foxes here. And this has managed to fall right at twilight in this franchise game. So very good time for viewing foxes, I guess. Not such a great time for looking at the game, unfortunately. The light is failing a little bit here. But anyway, here we go. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Enjoying the garden themed habitat I've created for him here. So quite a small habitat this one. Squeezed in the back here with plenty of room to accommodate the fox's needs. Yeah, about the only thing I'm not happy about with this habitat is the big ugly fences at the front. They're necessary to stop the foxes getting stressed at the guests looking at them, but I would love not to have to put these in here. That's the thing, working in a franchise zoo, the animals requirement always takes priority over style. Speaking of, two of them here together. Yeah, so only two foxes in this habitat currently. I'm sure there will be more at some stage. Little baby foxes will be along at some point. Not entirely sure what they're up to here. Intensely interested in the ground there. Ah, box enrichment. Yeah, we'll let them get on with that. Habitat wise, there wasn't a lot of work went into designing this habitat. I've played quite heavily into the whole garden theme with this one. So we've got the outhouse building at the back and a little vegetable patch at the front. Can't believe I've never made something like this before with the conservation pack pieces. I'm in love with those little carrots and oh, the little cauliflower as well. It's so sweet. Also thought might fit in well here is the bug habitat. So we've got a habitat within a habitat there with the little bug box. The rest of this habitat, well, it's just a nice self-contained garden space really for the foxes there. Not going to be winning any awards with this one, am I? But it does the job, so another one down. Let's see what's coming up next. Oh, this is one of my favourite animals in Planet Zoo. We're up to the red panda. Just two pandas needed for the social group, which is great. Space-wise, I don't think the red pandas take up an awful lot of room. Yep, 230 with some climbing requirement in there. 
we're not going to have a problem with that. So where I'm putting things, we're back over near the polar bear dome. The space in front of the polar dome, I think I can fit about three more habitats in here. We do have a few animals left that only need a small space. So the idea is to squeeze in as much as possible in these little areas that have been left open. In the early planning stages of this zoo, I was leaving this area free for animals that are colder biome animals. But I realised a few weeks ago that I'd left way too much room for those animals. There isn't enough of them and they don't need as much space as I'd left. So we may as well fill this in with other stuff. Now, personally, I think red pandas are one of the cutest animals in Planet Zoo. They're just full of such character and they're relatively easy to build for as well. They're not very demanding. Obviously, they don't need a lot of space. They do need a little bit of climbing stuff, which is actually quite nice to put in. They're also good with heavy foliage. About the only issue, again, it's the animal shyness. Red pandas are a shy species, so we've got to use that one-way glass again. In the case of the red pandas with this, it really bugs me because I've been to loads of zoos that have red panda exhibits and they're always really open. I've never seen a red panda habitat that's been restricted behind a one-way glass barrier. I know the red pandas I've seen are fairly neutral towards humans. They, they're very indifferent with them. And the habitats that I've seen, they've been way up in these massive huge trees most of the time as well. So that's something I've replicated here. Got some really huge tall trees in this habitat because that's what I've seen in real life. So let's take a look around. This is a good busy looking habitat. Plenty of trees and foliage. That's what I love with these type of habitats. They look so full of life. The guest barrier, it's a one-way glass barrier because red pandas are shy animals. Inside the habitat, it's like their own little woodland haven in here. They're just getting their bearings back here. Now they've not long gone in. It won't take them long to figure out the climbing aspects of this habitat though. The space is broken up into two distinct sections in here. So I've got a lot of rock work around the outside and then it's kind of like a soil island in the middle. And this is where the pandas will spend most of their time with the climbing stuff and the enrichment items. It's a small enclosure, so I'm not worried about guests getting a bad view considering the pandas won't be right up against the fence for most of the time. I have made some custom climbing frames in here, like this one that wraps around the tree. Nothing massively elaborate here, just making use of the standard climbing poles that you get in the habitat tab. The hard shelter for the pandas, this is a raised small log building, sort of like a tree house, but without the tree, I didn't want them clipping into it and having navigation issues if I was to put this on a tree. But overall, I'd say this is one of my better red panda habitats for sure. So that's four more animals into the Every Animal Zoo this week. Join me next time when we're a bit all over the place with some of the animals left to go in. So be a bit of a mixed bag, I think. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.